been professional. <laughs> yes, he has been professionally uh, photographing uh, different things, mostly botanical subjects for over 50 years. He's focused on the Klamath Mountains, Trinity Alps, as well as the north coast of California right here. Also the Blue Ridge Mountains and two cantons in Switzerland. So uh, Ken was one of the uh, co-authors of Wildflowers of the Trinity Alps, co-authored with Julie Kierstad and Julie Knorr, published by our own Backcountry Press in 2017. Um, I bought a copy of that book and have enjoyed it and used it uh, frequently on trips to the Klamath Mountains. And uh, in 2021, uh, Ken completed a revised and expanded version, which is now titled Wildflowers of California Klamath Mountains. It's available for sale right here tonight in the back there. Um, and this book contains 629 species, subspecies and varieties of plants that are native to the Klamath Mountains. Ken is an avid backpacker, trail runner, and mountain biker. Uh, he claims that his parents took him on his first backpacking trip when he was four months old. He had a 38-year career as uh, with the U.S. Forest Service, predominantly with the Shasta Trinity National Forest. And he's done a lot of other interesting things which I could go on and on about, but I know we all want to see his pictures. So join me in welcoming Candy Camp. Thank you. Uh, this program wouldn't have been possible tonight without Barbara's help. She's my techie person and the one that waves me down out in the street when I can't find my way around. <clears throat> so anyway, I want I, want to thank you for uh, coming this evening, and uh, I hope this uh, program uh, is good for you. And uh, I, oh, before I go any further, I have a couple of years ago, I had a run in with a bear. And um, uh, I don't know if you follow Michael Kaufman's Backcountry Press podcast, um, but he has a, a little thing on there about that bear encounter. I don't see very well now. <clears throat> I if, if I look at you with my right eye, you're here. With my left eye, you're up here. <clears throat> so it's making it increasingly difficult for me to get out and find, uh, especially the minute in the, in the woods anymore. Um, <clears throat> that uh, being said, um, I have one more thing to add. Um, I had, I've got uh, about an acre and a half in Shasta Lake City, and I had photinias planted all around it. And as you know, they take a ton of water. So I've been pulling them up and transplanting um, Toyon, which takes no water. It makes a beautiful hedge and uh, has lots of nifty berries on it, and the wildlife loves it. So if you're intrigued with that sort of thing, um, we have to really be careful with water uh, in the Central Valley. It, might not be a big problem here, but <clears throat> so anyway, there are 1,250 species of wildflowers, varieties, and subspecies in the Trinity Alps alone. I don't know how many occur in the Klamath Mountains uh, per se, but um, uh, uh, my book has 600 and some odd photographs in it of different species uh, and uh, varieties and subspecies. So I've only really touched the, um, uh, the outside edge of what actually grows. My friend Joaquin over here uh, probably knows all of these things by heart. He's, he's a good traffic director for me uh, when I need to find something out in the woods. So anyway, what you see here is um, a little take on um, my uh, wildflowers. And we're not working. Oh, there we go. Okay, just a, a quick, in, uh, some photographs of the country that um, I uh, do my shooting in. How many of you been to the, to the Klamath, backpacking or otherwise? Oh, a good bunch, okay. So you might be familiar with a lot of these areas. This is looking up Canyon Creek towards um, Thompson Peak and Caesars Cap. 
uh, Wedding Cake and uh, Sawtooth Mountain. Um, it's, as you can tell, it's really rugged country. Canyon Creek is a place to avoid uh, at all costs during the big holidays. There'll be 600, 700 cars at the trailhead. Not pleasant. Yeah, here we go. Okay. The last semi permanent snow fields in the Trinity Alps behind uh, Thompson and Caesars Peak. Uh, they're pretty much gone now. Um, uh, when I was a kid back in the 50s, they were actually considered to be glaciers. Um, but uh, for the last 20 years or so, uh, they're nothing more than just little snow fields. But uh, several botanists have been in studying the plants that uh, that occur in those um, in those areas just below the the snow fields there, and they're pretty well marked. I <clears throat> I can't get up there anymore because. <laughs> My vision, I can't do that well. Uh, on... hmm. no. see the... Got to keep going here. <clears throat> this is an area, Horse Creek Meadows, uh, up uh, towards Tangle Blue that very few people ever get into. Uh, really rich with wildflowers. It's an awesome place if you don't mind going off trail and scrambling through brush. Um, it's one of my favorite areas to go. Another uh, area here is um, Cub Wallow, which is just beyond the lake down in there. Another place where nobody goes. You can be guaranteed solitude in there any time of the year. <clears throat> nobody ever goes in there. And it's another place that's really rich uh, with wildflowers. This is Lion Lake um, in the foreground. This is looking out at the Red Trinities on the left. You're looking from Weaver Bali, um, or Monument Peak actually, out towards Trinity Lake. And you can see all those wonderful clear cut blocks in the background. <clears throat> um, this is a, a, a neat area to go. There's a lot going on in this particular area for, you know, botanically. Uh, the Trinity River <clears throat> um, is, all up and down the Upper Trinity is just uh, another place that's really rich. Oh, 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 we lost it. There we go. <clears throat> this is another of my favorite places to go. This is um, granite and serpentine country up in uh, Union Meadows. Um, you can see Caribou Mountain in the background. Um, I love stormy weather and I hit the Alps whenever I know thunderstorms are gonna hit because it's great for photography and everybody else leaves. <clears throat> so uh, I've actually been up uh, Canyon Creek in uh, late July when massive thunderstorms moved through and uh, there was not a soul at the lakes, no, nobody at the lakes. <clears throat> they all were packing out when I was going in. <clears throat> this is a big flat, Caribou Mountain in the background, <clears throat> and uh, this um, is another, uh, what I'm showing you are just really great places to look for wildflowers. This is the head of Coffee Creek. Coffee Creek was devastated by the fires this last year, and um, if you haven't been up there since the fires, you will not recognize it, uh, guaranteed. Uh, the creek is in, it's just I'm telling you, it's utter devastation up there. I, uh, I haven't seen anything like that since I was in fire many, many years ago. <clears throat> Red Mountain, <clears throat> Stonewall Pass, and uh, the Stony Ridge Trail. That's Trinity Lake in the background, Shasta Bali way in the back. Um, I have shot 56 species of wildflowers on this climb from the trailhead to Echo Lake. These meadows are extremely rich. Um, of course, it's all serpentine and the plant communities in there, uh, a lot of endemics. <clears throat> it's a wonderful place to go. You want to carry a lot of water with you if you go up in the summer because it's hot and dry until you get to um, Red Mountain Meadows. Oops, going backwards here. There we go. This illustrates 
the contrast between serpentine and uh, the granitics in the Trinity Alps. That's uh, Gibson Peak in the background. And uh, in the foreground here are, are the serpentines right above Echo Lake and uh, Siligo Meadows just on the other side of the, uh, of the little divide there. <clears throat> We're at Lower Right Lake and the marbles. And that's um, uh, just an area that is just incredible. Um, I, I can't even begin to tell you how many wildflowers you'd, you'd find in there. Um, it's an interesting place to go. You don't want to camp at Lower Right, the big lake there, unless you like cows. <clears throat> <clears throat> Everything's just covered with cow flop. <clears throat> Boulder Peak, uh, all the way to the top of that peak is just a botanist delight. This is the outlet of Upper Right Lake on the left-hand side there. <clears throat> this is Eaton Peak. Um, the first time I ever saw Nothochelone was at the base of, in the center of there, that little gap right at the base climbing up to the top. Uh, that was one, it's called Turtle Heads. Um, I had never seen it before, and it grows all around that peak. And since that time, I've found it all through the Russians. <clears throat> Big Blue, I wonder how it got its name. <clears throat> this, uh, it's a rugged little trip to get in there, but uh, well worth it if you're uh, so inclined. <clears throat> Lots of wildflowers. Now this, I threw this in just to show uh, the contrast between, this was in 2011 taken from um, uh, the ridge right above uh, Lower Russian Lake, uh, all green and pretty. This was uh, after the July fire, the following. And you can tell um, that burned pretty well in there, especially in the back there. This is the Trinity Divide. Uh, that's Timber Lake down below in the lower right-hand side. and. Uh, Mount Eddy in the background. And if you want a real botanical experience, go to Mount Eddy. Uh, walk the PCT into Deadfall Lakes and um, uh, hopefully in July, early August, and you will not be disappointed. Unbelievable. This is uh, uh, looking west towards the Trinity Alps in the background, but this is the Ramshorn uh, area right here. Uh, in the middle ground. <clears throat> and uh, some of those basins are very isolated, hard to get to, but um, another great place if you like to botanize. This is looking from the summit of Mount Eddy down over Deadfall Lakes. <clears throat> and uh, that whole area looks a little barren uh, when you're actually looking at all that serpentine there, but it's just unbelievably packed with wildflowers. <clears throat> Scott Mountain is like the epicenter for um, uh, most botanists in the Klamath Mountains. Uh, this is where a whole bunch of botanical zones come together from the um, uh, Sierra, the Klamath, the Coast Ranges, the Central Valley. Uh, they all come together at this point, kind of like right in the center. And uh, it's all serpentine. And uh, uh, a day spent up there is very rewarding. Uh, most of the plants are uh, teeny, teeny, tiny, hard to find and all that uh, serpentine because of the colors. This is a Darlingtonia fan at Kangaroo Lake, <clears throat> uh, which is a popular campsite. Uh, Castle Crags, I threw this in because I've been looking for the Castle Crags harebell and I'm always a little too late or a little too early getting up there to find it. So hopefully this year coming up. <clears throat> and recently the McLeod Range has been added to the Klamath. Um, uh, there's a, a preponderance of limestone scattered out all through the Klamath Range and where this was part of uh, a different regime before uh, for the Cascades. Now it's considered part of the Klamath and a very unique um, uh, population of wildflowers in all this limestone. And you'll see some of those in a little bit. <clears throat> this is the PCT going into Deadfall Lakes. You can see all the wildflowers there, just tons everywhere you look. <clears throat> this is the trail between upper right and lower right in the marbles, same thing. 
uh, hard to find the trail sometimes because of the, uh, the wildflowers growing, overgrowing it. <clears throat> this is the old, old, old Bear Creek Trail from um, up to Monument Peak. Um, and lots of penstemon and uh, snowbrush on this trail. Brush Creek Lakes it's right over the right over the summit there. This, if you if you want a um, a frying pan poppy experience, go to the Clickapootie Trail on Shasta Lake. It is just hundreds and hundreds of acres, just like this popcorn flowers, bird's eye gilia, and uh, frying pan poppies, with a smattering of lupins thrown in. This is just a very small. It just goes on and on and on for hundreds of acres. <clears throat> uh, this is where I had my my bear thing <clears throat> down below the, the peaks in that little area right in there many years ago. But that's another plate. There's an extant stand of um, quaking aspen up there that's probably the most beautiful in the Trinity Alps, uh, just below the lake, uh, just below East Fork Lakes. This was the last picture I took before uh, I had my little fisticuffs with the bear. I had planned on adding about 200 species to the book, uh, to my first edition of the book. And uh, uh, the bear thing took care of that real quick. I had to call it uh, quits at about 160, I think. So this was the very last uh, photograph I took that summer of uh, wildflowers. This Paul Stephanomeria, beautiful. Right near the trailhead going to East Fork Lakes. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> in Union Meadows, um, this uh, beautiful stick seed is prevalent, grows all along the trail through the upper part of the meadows, uh, going up to uh, Foster Lake. And it's one of, uh, one of my granddaughter's favorites. She loves that. She's eight. <laughs> She's been backpacking with me since she was four. <clears throat> so. And this is the pink stick seed. And the only place I've seen this is at the head of Saloon Creek and uh, below, um, or just above, along the PCT uh, above Saloon Creek. So there's a fairly good population there, South Fork Lakes, um, that area. Everybody knows marsh marigolds. I've thrown in, uh, this program is mostly um, the new stuff that I've added to the uh, to this second edition of the book, but uh, if I got good pictures of uh, previous um, wildflowers, I've thrown those in as well. They're one of my favorites. <clears throat> West Coast Canada Goldenrod. Um, the shot this uh, at the head of uh, Mumford Meadows in, up Swift Creek, but it grows everywhere. Everybody knows Goldenrod. Okay, the three um, varieties of uh, waterleaf, uh, white on the left below um, South Fork Lake. Uh, in the middle, uh, that was above Foster Lake, and on the right, that was um, up Coffee Creek. The height of social distancing. <laughs> I, I couldn't help it, but I, I found these, uh, this. <laughs> it just spoke to me for some reason. <laughs> Indian warrior. Yeah. And everybody knows Applegate's Indian paintbrush. It's probably one of the most prevalent paintbrushes in the Klamaths. Uh, you'll find it everywhere along every trail. Um, everywhere. It doesn't make any difference if it's granitic, metamorphic, or serpentine. It's quite at home almost everywhere you go. <clears throat> Common owl's clover. Um, this is real prevalent uh, in uh, uh, limestones from Clickapootie Trail north to um, the McLeod, the upper end of the McLeod Range in grassy, meadowy areas. This English peat greenbrier is one of those wildflowers that is really difficult to shoot. You even breathe on this and the petals fall off. So it took me over an hour to actually find a place where I could set my tripod up and the camera and stand back, hold my breath and, and uh, hit the shutter button. <clears throat> um, 
So this is California or the English Peak Green, green Briar, and I shot this up uh, Canyon Creek. No, I shot this up Stewart's Fork. This is California Green Briar, and I guarantee you do not want to reach in and grab a hold of this thing. <clears throat> Um, this was on the Upper Trinity River near Eagle Creek Campground. <clears throat> Oral milkweed. Um, I had the other milkweeds, uh, some of the other milkweeds in my first edition of the book. This was new to the second edition. This was right around Lewiston Lake. <clears throat> this is one of my favorites. And uh, I shot the uh, the one on the left uh, up Canyon Creek and the one on the right up Stewart's Fork. <clears throat> Stumbled onto both of them. I, I was actually in the process of shooting something else um, when I'm waiting for the camera to do its thing. I'm looking around and I spotted these. Uh, by the way, I'm not a professional botanist. <laughs> I'm a shoot first find out later kind of guy. I, uh, uh, I go to people like Joaquin if I, you know, if I get stumped on something. <clears throat> Purple Sanicle. <clears throat> um, there's quite a few wildflowers in here that uh, I, I swear somebody needs to do some genetic studies on these things because that one on the right is definitely not purple. <clears throat> this grows everywhere in meadow areas all through the Trinity Alps and uh, the Russians and the marbles. Very common, Nevada, Lewisia, and uh, uh, absolutely gorgeous. You can't walk through Union Meadows without stepping on these things. <clears throat> Same with Quill Leaf, Lewisia. Uh, this was, I shot this actually during a snowstorm up at uh, East Boulder Lake last year. <clears throat> And three leaved Lewisia. This was above East Weaver Lake on the trail into the lake. Uh, about that, several places throughout the Trinity Alps. And it was one of my favorites, Bitterroot. I think everybody knows Bitterroot, the uh, uh, state flower from Montana. Um, some are pink. Uh, all the ones that I've seen, this is on Scott Mountain, it's a surrounded by serpentine. Um, they're all white with peak anthers. Columbia Lewisia, this was a new one for the second edition. And I shot this above uh, Upper Albert Lake in the uh, Russians. <clears throat> and um, the difference between this and the others, I, I'm not really sure, but it has a lot to do with the structure of the leaves. Uh, Joaquin might know more about that than I do, but uh, beautiful, beautiful flower growing in the rocks all up above the lake. Everywhere you look, there were just hundreds of these things. Okay, phacelias. <clears throat> Lots of phacelia stuff going on. <clears throat> this was on Oregon Mountain, uh, going into Weaverville, uh, just before you hit the summit, uh, going down into Weaverville. It's uh, growing in the rocks in those real sharp bends on the west side on 299. This is caterpillar plant. <clears throat> um, and very common, very common all through the area, lower elevation areas of the uh, Klamath. This is Serpentine Facilia, and I shot this up uh, towards Eagle Creek Campground on the Upper Trinity River. Uh, and I found that most of the plants I've taken pictures of, the leaves tend reddish. <clears throat> This is tall facilia. This is at the outlet of Upper Right Lake. And uh, I couldn't find uh, a really beautiful bunch where they were all in good shape, but uh, it was growing with pokeweed knotweed in the background there. And you can see uh, the facilia in here, kind of the yellowish flowers. Very tall, some of them uh, three to uh, three and a half feet. These, this is variable leaf scorpion weed, and these things were on Trinity Dam Boulevard uh, to the north of Trinity Mountain before you get to the east fork of Trinity River. And some of these were four and five feet tall and growing on the barren hot 
hillsides uh, on the uh, cut banks above the highway. <clears throat> this, I've been traveling these roads up here since I was a kid, and Julie Kirstead, the uh, uh, same way, been up and down these roads a, a million times. I never took notice of this facilia, and she hadn't either until she and Lynn Lindstadt were up doing some uh, fire recovery uh, research. And there it was growing right along the road. Has no name as yet, um, but um, I was lucky enough to, at Julie's um, urging, to get up and get some pictures of it. So no name. It'll, hopefully it'll wind up in the next edition. This showy columbia. Um, it grows down along the Trinity River, uh, up at the head of Black Basin in the Trinity Alps, uh, uh, above um, Lower Right Lake and the Russians are in the marbles. Uh, beautiful, beautiful flower. They tend from beautiful pink to orange. Here's a teeny, tiny, teeny uh, yellow staining colomia. Um, you can tell by the size of the little pebbles in the background. It is extremely tiny. And uh, this was one of those that I was laying in the dirt, taking pictures of something else. And I found out I was actually laying on top of some of these. <clears throat> those flowers are maybe half the size of your little fingernail. <clears throat> This is Tracy's Colomia. This was coming down from Packers Peak uh, a few years ago, uh, growing all along the trail. In fact, some of this, these were growing right in the middle of the trail. Uh, I say trail, there's, the trail is hardly recognizable anymore. Um, when I worked for the Forest Service back in the 60s, we used to pack supplies up to the lookout on Packers Peak. Uh, and uh, it hasn't been used, lookout was torn down years ago and, and very few people ever go up that trail. I was surprised when Michael Kaufman got a hold of me last year and wanted to know where some of these plants were because they were doing some trail work up there. And it surprised me. It used to, the trail up and over the top was a major uh, thoroughfare for the early rangers going from Mount Shasta to um, the Scott Valley. <clears throat> this, um, I've taken a little liberty here. I actually named these falls. They don't have a name, but um, uh, well, they do. I named them, so that's good. <clears throat> so you can tell up here in the little crevices of the rock, you can see these little little tiny pinkish purple flowers uh, up in those crevices, growing down through the crevices. Um, that's this stuff, Siskiyou daisy. Um, and it grows... Uh, all through the waterfall section of uh, Canyon Creek, from Canyon Creek Cascades to Lower Falls. There's several waterfalls in there. And if you, if you leave the trail and walk down through the rocks, you'll, you'll find this stuff blooming. It's beautiful and, and they're small. Wrong way. <clears> the <throat> okay, same thing with Boykinia. It's a real common uh, wildflower um, that grows all through the area. You'll find it almost anywhere. You find it over here on the coast. <clears throat> but um, the, you see the little daisies over there on the, on the right-hand side in the cleft of the rock there. This is right above Canyon Creek flowing right below. <clears throat> and those are the flowers and the leaves. Um, I talked to one person up there when I was taking these pictures that insisted this was elephant ears. <clears throat> well, I couldn't change the mind, so <clears throat> Western Sweet Colesfoot, very common throughout the mountains in wet areas. Uh, this is, I photographed these in a spring uh, along the road to the Canyon Creek Trailhead, and the flowers are absolutely gorgeous. <clears throat> Green corn lilies are pretty much limited to the north side of the Trinity Alps, below the Scott Mountain Divide and into the Russians and the Marbles. You won't find it any further south than that in the Trinity Alps, but I thought this was above Upper Right Lake, and I thought that that was a pretty, pretty good pair for both of them growing together. <clears throat> this is in the uh, Marbles. Okay, <laughs> Anderson's Tundra Aster, Anderson's Mountain Crown. This is what you get. 
white, white pinkish blue with really fat petals, um, really light blue on the left-hand side. These was petals that are thin and scattered. And these purple ones up um, above L Lake. Uh, <clears throat> this is another one that'll drive most people crazy. Um, so I, in my book, I, I included all of these just like I did here. So that's what it is. Okay, <clears throat> going up uh, the upper Trinity River, there's a place called Sunflower Flat that was named by the miners back in the day. <clears throat> and what they were referring to were the balsam roots, uh, especially uh, the deltoid leaf balsam root. <clears throat> it grows um, all through the upper Trinity area and up Ramshorn Creek and a few other places. <clears throat> And this is silky balsam root, which um, I, I shot this picture up on Scott Mountain in the serpentine. And the leaves are really have a real nice feel to them, very well named silky. And then this is the hybrid. <clears throat> and um, uh, petal structure is a little different, but um, indeterminate on uh, for most places, but the leaves are. Uh, are the dead giveaway. They're deltoid shaped, uh, but deeply cleft. Clasping ornica, you'll find this along streams uh, and edges of lakes almost uh, everywhere in the Trinities. I've not found it in the Russians uh, or the marbles, but um, this was up along um, the uh, trail to uh, uh, Red Mountain Meadows. And then here's another one. I didn't know what I had until I got home and I saw how hairy this thing was when I put it up on the big screen. But this is Cordillerian Arnica or Hairy Arnica. This was at uh, Caribou Lake up, uh, in 2017. I shot this. <clears throat> Mount Eddy, dwarf alpine gold uh, up near the about two thirds of the way to the summit along the trail to the top of Mount Eddy. I was actually going up to find Sky Pilot, and I was just uh, like five days too late to get a hold to get pictures of it. <clears throat> uh, but I did find these, which was a new one to me. And then uh, mock leopard bane. Um, I have been going to the um, trailhead above East Weaver Lake. I don't know how many hundreds and millions of times. Um, and I'd never seen these, or I just bypassed them thinking they were something else. Um, my first solo backpacking trip was, I was 10 years old, and my folks kicked me out up near the lookout, and and I hiked into East Weaver and spent the night worried about bears getting into my tent. <clears throat> um, but I, I'm, these were blooming. I remember these uh, yellow uh, flowers blooming at the trailhead, but I had no clue what they were. Of course, I was 10. I was, I was more interested in fish. <clears throat> um, Rock Daisy, this is along the ridge top above um, East Weaver Lake, a nice population. Narrow leaf uh, Wyethia. <clears throat> I had these miss, we, uh, even my seasoned botanist, we had these uh, mules here as misnamed in the first edition of the book. And uh, if you look back, you'll see that um, uh, uh, Augustifolia was the name we gave to uh, mule's ears, uh, which was not true. <clears throat> anyway, we made the correction. There's another um, Mount Eddy uh, wildflower, cut leaf daisies. This was uh, near the top, uh, probably uh, 300 yards below the summit of Mount Eddy. And this was another new one to me. Very low growing in and around all the, the serpentine rock. <clears throat> this is Mount Lassen fleabane, and this is pretty typical of the way it grows. Out from the center, the flowers fold out and, and bloom uh, in circles around the central uh, stems. They look like close up after a frosty morning. <clears throat> There's a flat going up uh, towards the North Fork of Swift Creek along the road, uh, and it grows all over that flat. People four-wheel drive through it and, and uh, beat it up, but these things come back every year. 
Klamath cone flowers. <clears throat> um, the photograph on the left is from uh, Swift Creek, the trail up Swift Creek. And on the right uh, was a, a group of them growing below Foster's cabin up along Swift Creek also. <clears throat> okay, I can blame this one on Joaquin. We, I couldn't figure out what this thing was that he said sort of tentatively it could be. <laughs> So there you have it. Very tall um, the stems, or you can tell uh, just a few little uh, sharp leaves growing scattered along the stems. This was at uh, along the trail to um, Horseshoe Lake. <clears throat> okay, I was this picture. Everybody's seen mountain strawberries. They they uh, grow all along the trails everywhere. Um, but interestingly enough. I was taking this picture when um, in Union at the spring above Union Meadows when a cow elk came charging up the trail not five feet away from me, just ripping up through the thing, sticks and dirt flying everywhere. I almost knocked my tripod over trying to get out of the way. <clears throat> um, so this photograph's memorable. <laughs> As it turned out, there was a pretty good little herd in there of about 15 elk, maybe feeding in the meadows. Union Creek. This is the ridge top uh, between Upper Albert and Taylor Lakes and the Russians. And um, at one time, uh, when logging reigned supreme, there was a logging road that came in along the top here. Uh, it has since uh, grown over, um, and it is just literally covered with these Brewer's Lupin. Those flowers are about the size of, yeah. If I put a penny there, uh, you the, the penny would take up this much room. Th these flowers are tiny, 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 and they they grow just hundreds, just vast fields of them up on that uh, uh, that ridge top. <clears throat> this is one of my favorites, velvet lupin. Um, I I drove. This is near the um, uh, right above Trinity Lake. Uh, before you get to the Stewart's Fork uh, Bridge. And I'd driven, that's another one, I'd driven past and driven past. And all of a sudden, one day I'm looking over there and I see these beautiful um, greenish blue leaves uh, with what looked like flowers. I got out and took a look and this is what you get. They're absolutely gorgeous. And they, they're just soft and, and uh, very touchable. There's one grows everywhere, uh, nightshade. You've got it all over the coast, all over up there. This was up Canyon Creek. <clears throat> Another uh, Mount Eddy, rough harebells. Now these, uh, this group that I shot was light blue. They also uh, further up are deep purple all along the trail. Um, this was in July. I shot this in a snowstorm up at the top of uh, Packers Peak. <clears throat> um, it had just started to snow when I found these right uh, just below the peak and growing in the rocks just below where the old lookout used to sit. <clears throat> okay, here's a good one. This is Trinity Mountain Pretty Face. Uh, the plants tend to be anywhere from 14 to 18 inches tall. They're absolutely beautiful. This was up the North Fork uh, Swift Creek Road. Oops. This is Trinity Mountain's pretty face. <laughs> the plant on the left is about six inches tall. I've never found one any, any larger. Um, but according to the powers that be, they are one and the same. So go figure. <clears throat> this is a hybrid uh, penstemon that grows um, uh, between South Fork Lake and um, Long Gulch Lake on the ridge top. <clears throat> and it's, uh, beautiful. it's the only place I've seen it, right on the ridge in the rocks, metamorphosed rocks right at the top of the ridge. And I love this shot. <clears throat> red, bush, red bush beard tongue. Um, it, um, up Canyon Creek, uh, I've shot this up uh, almost to Mirror Lake in the, uh, in the Trinities. 
That whole field on the left is all Russell's Mountain Penstemon. And uh, that's, that's uh, in Parker Meadows up Swift Creek. Beautiful little Penstemon. This is one I looked for for years. I, I can't tell you how many times I hiked to the top of Packers Peak to find this, only to find them too late or too early. And finally, on the, my fourth hike to the top, which is steep, <laughs> I finally found them. And um, uh, they were just starting to deteriorate a little bit, but um, I, I figured they were good enough to include in the book. <clears throat> Tracy's Beard Tongue. On the P PCT going into uh, Deadfall Lakes. Light of the Sierra, beautiful color. And I love hot rock pensaments. Most people, you can walk right past them because they don't look like much, but if you get up close and personal, they are you know, just a beautiful wildflower. <clears throat> narrow leaved onion. This is on um, along 299 on Oregon Mountain uh, before you get to Weaverville. And Sierra onion, dusky onion. This um, I shot along Trinity Mountain or uh, Trinity Dam Boulevard, um, just above Trinity Lake. Dusky onion. This is um, one that I shot. Uh, along with the mock leopard bane uh, above Lake, uh, not Lake Eleanor, but East Weaver Lake at the trailhead. <clears throat> Whipple vine that grows on the coast. This was up Canyon Creek. And this stuff grows everywhere, but um, some places I found it uh, over on our side of the, of the hills. Um, not all that common. Uh, this was right above Shasta Lake um, near Samwell Cave. <clears throat> Purple flowered Washington lily. Um, my wife says it's not purple. <laughs> I said, well, wait, as it gets older, it turns purple. <clears throat> Queen's cups. Um, they're very common almost everywhere you go in damp, shaded areas. Beautiful. It's also called doll's eyes or bead lily. Um, the little um, berries. <clears throat> this is up Horse Creek Meadows. Um, yellow fawn lily, uh, glacier lily growing in the rocks all the way to the ridge line above Bear Lakes. <clears throat> Pretty common. Uh, see it in a lot of areas in the Trinities. And uh, scarlet fritillary, that's another real common one over there, uh, mostly at lower elevations, uh, drier sites. This was above our, our near Hers Mountain Lookout above Shasta Lake in the limestone, uh, checker lily or mission bells. <clears throat> um, and this is spotted mountain bells in Union Meadows. <clears throat> I love Union Meadows. Uh, it, once I get up there and I start digging around for wildflowers, I am never disappointed. I don't care what time of year I go. <clears throat> Yellow bells are this beautiful little fritillary that um, follows the melting snow on Scott Mountain. Um, the really good ones, the really pretty ones are right next to the melting snow. As you get further away from the snow banks, they tend to um, age really quickly. Um, so the snow on these is just behind the lilies are probably about two feet, three feet away. <clears throat> California fawn lily. Um, this grows above French Gulch. Uh, along Trinity Mountain or Tr Trinity Dam Boulevard. Uh, I think heading up towards the divide of, can't remember which road I was on, but one of the roads that goes over to Lewiston. And uh, this is the Shasta Fawn Lily uh, that grows below Hers Mountain Lookout. Uh, we were really afraid that uh, we lost all of these in the car fire. Um, because that whole area burned, but 
uh, the lilies actually survived, which was good to know. There's one beautiful pocket there before you get to the lookout where you'll find these blooming. Here's another one, Scott Mountain Fawn Lily, and these are all, uh, according to the Julies, these are all Scott Mountain Fawn Lilies. And uh, uh, again, I think probably a couple of them, maybe three of them could be hybrids. I, I'm not sure. But, uh, the one on the left is up Swift Creek. The one on the center left is on um, Bonanza King, on the road to Bonanza King Lookout. This one is above uh, Lewiston. And the, this one on the right is uh, all above Weaverville. Uh, I shot this on high, along Highway 3 above Weaverville. Purdy's Fritillary, uh, another one of my little favorites. I was uh, driving a, an old uh, section of, I shouldn't call it old, a section of Highway 3 that's been abandoned. When I was a kid, it was the main road. <laughs> Um, it was dirt, but um, I was driving that up to a little meadow one day where I was going to get out and do some shooting, and I spotted all these little, like, white little stars out through the flats through the trees, and it turned out to be these. <clears throat> They're very small. Uh, like, this one here is probably only about maybe four inches tall, replete with a couple of ants. <clears throat> And I, I sometimes go overboard on these, but I love leopard lilies. <laughs> um, this is up Swift Creek. Uh, this is up Mumford Meadows. This is up Canyon Creek. That plant on the left-hand side was over seven feet tall. And they grow just below the Canyon Creek Cascades. There's a whole meadow just full of them. Uh, these anywhere from five to seven. So I think some of them might even been taller than that. Okay, this is a flat above Log Lake in the Trinity Alps. And if you look real close, you see a, like a little purple haze in between um, the ball head sandwort with the little white flowers and the eddy stone crop, the yellow ones. And uh, I was up there with my um, one of my granddaughters many years ago. She was seven or eight years old. And we were coming down from the lake and she spotted these. I didn't even see them. Oh, she's my good little botanical partner these days. <clears throat> so these things are really tiny, really tiny. And uh, they grow in the gravelly flats um, uh, going up towards uh, Log Lake above uh, Tangle Blue. This is a limestone monkey flower uh, that you'll find uh, near Sam, uh, towards Samwell Cave. Uh, if you've ever been in there, it's a really interesting area, and this grows uh, in the little pockets and clefts in the limestone uh, around the, the cave. And here's a primrose monkey flower. <clears throat> uh, this one was from near Stoddard Lake <clears throat> many years ago, and this is a primrose monkey flower that I shot up in the marbles uh, two years ago. A little different, linear folia and primuloides. And I just like Kellogg's monkey flowers. Um, they're pretty common, um, all along trails, roadsides, um, Shasta Bali, um, up through the limestone country and into the um, Canyon Creek and Stewart's Fork. Now, usually chickweed monkey flower has uh, little red spots. Um, but I've been told that this is a chickweed monkey flower also. And this was growing in the limestone near Potem Falls uh, on the east side of Shasta Lake. And this is one of my favorites. I don't know how many times I've been to Scott Mountain. I've walked all over that mountain. I think I know it by heart two years, three years ago. Um, I just happened to look down at taking pictures of uh, see what was it? Spotted coral root, I believe, and I just happened to look over and I spotted dozens of these. They're really tiny. Uh, the biggest ones were like uh, two inches tall. 
<clears throat> this is another one. I found this gray cushion pussy toes on um, uh, Scott Mountain as well. And I shot this little group and I searched all over. I walked, I don't know, all over that mountain looking for more. I never found any. And I, to this day, I've not found any more. <clears throat> Rosy pussy toes. This is uh, going up towards uh, horse camp above uh, the Upper Trinity River. Okay, this is Cedar Lake up on the divide. And if you look in the water here, you'll see the little white flowers sticking up out of the water. That's this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is uh, interesting. Uh, on the left-hand side is a picture I took in Switzerland uh, in 2018. On the right is one I shot at Cedar Lake. In uh, Swiss, it's Fieberkli, fire pea. And I don't know how it got that name, but um, it did. My uh, granddaughters couldn't stand that name, so they named it Alpine Fringe. So unofficially, that's what it is. <laughs> Little elephant heads. <clears throat> um, this is a, another one that uh, is pretty common up in the Russians, as well as the Trinity Alps, um, near the, uh, you know, any place where it's damp and shaded pretty well. Uh, the one on the left I shot, uh, I think that was at the outlet of Big Blue. <clears throat> on the right was from um, uh, Mumford Meadows. Leafy louse work, when I was a kid, we call these elephant heads. <clears throat> um, and this was at Upper Right Lake. <clears throat> now this, <clears throat> um, this is going into Smith Lake and uh, that's Sawtooth Peak or Sawtooth Mountain in the background. Uh, Morris Lake sits right there and that you can just barely see the lake. So this is the path from Alpine, or the pass from Alpine to uh, Smith and Morris. So it looks pretty barren, but it is just loaded with rusty saxifrage, all those little clefts in between the rocks. <clears throat> sticky syncofoil, uh, glandulosa, and this is sticky syncofoil, uh, just a variety. And every time I develop these things, I find critters crawling around on them <clears throat> that I don't notice when I'm actually taking the pictures. Here's another one, <laughs> brewer syncofoil. This is Scott Mountain. Um, and this is Northwest Syncofoil uh, without bugs. I don't know. <clears throat> Contorted Sun Cup. This is along the uh, uh, Trinity River uh, below Lewiston. It's a ground hugger and um, yeah, it grows pretty close to the river. I uh, found little pockets of it all along the river below Lewiston. Uh, Thread Lenanthus. This is another one. Those Flowers are so tiny and the, and the stems are so fine that even breathing on it, uh, hard to get pictures because of the motion. <clears throat> Bird's eye gelia. This was uh, a click of pooty with the frying pan poppies uh, growing all over in those big uh, hillside masses of frying pan poppies. Now, I understand this has a name change. I, I didn't have time to make it. Uh, it's, I don't know what it is right now, but um, it's still in a tall sandwort, but uh, it's not a, no longer a sabulina. This was an evening shot at Caribou, Alpine Shooting Stars. Um, they grow all over that basin. And uh, boy, the color just really fires up when the, when the sun starts to go down. Common blue cup. This is above Shasta Lake. I uh, got a little beetle in there. <clears throat> this is hillside Kalinzia. Um, some people call them blue eyed Marys, um, it, one and the same, basically. This is very tiny, though. <clears throat> and I have a favorite running trail out at Shasta Lake that I've run for years and years and years. And I've seen these plants and I've stopped and looked through, looked through. I, literally, for 30 years, I've been running that trail. 
and I never saw flowers until two years ago, three years ago. And uh, all of a sudden, here they were. And since that time, I've found them blooming everywhere. So <clears throat> they're small little ground hugger, uh, like a little spreading ground cover. <clears throat> Yeah, I used to do a lot of shooting after I retired from the Forest Service, did a lot of shooting for the Trinity River Restoration uh, Project. And so one of my uh, last jobs was to shoot all of the previous construction side channels that they had built off of the main part of the Trinity River. And as I was waiting, I had to wade all of these. <clears throat> I noticed all these little tiny uh, flowers, these little uh, aquatic plants, and this is what they are. <clears throat> and I'd been working up there for seven years and I had never seen them before. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful little buttercup. Okay, some of my absolute all-time favorites are the uh, grass of Parnassus. This flower, the, the inset, is this one in the background right there. You can see all the little buds coming out. This is in September. Uh, they're late bloomers. Um, I've found them blooming in October and early November up Parks Creek um, on the Trinity Divide. So this is marsh grass of Parnassus. This is it a little close up. This is from uh, Lake Eleanor. A really pretty grass. Grass of Parnassus has a reputation all through Europe um, that people write poetry about it. Um, uh, it's in fact, I included one of them in, in my the latest edition of my book. This is from Switzerland. Uh, they call it Swamp Sweetheart. <laughs> and I shot this this last uh, July uh, in uh, the uh, Simmental in Switzerland. Same, same plant, Velostris. This is Cascade grass of Parnassus. <clears throat> and um, this was also at Lake Eleanor, uh, which is outside of the Trinity Alps, but it's a small protected area. This is San Bernardino grass of Parnassus, and this is um, up above Kangaroo Lake in the Darlingtonia Fen at the back of the lake. <clears throat> and this is fringed grass of Parnassus. <clears throat> I, I love these, and I, I think they're just absolutely stunning wildflowers. They're beautiful. I shot this one in uh, late October, and it was freezing cold uh, and raining when I, when I got this picture. Here's another one. This whole flat here, um, this is above Shimmy Lake in October. And my son and I were up there, and we're walking along, and it just looks dead like you would expect the grasses to look. Well, you look closer and here's all these, these little masses of purple flowers. And here's this, here they are close up. <clears throat> um, I swear you could walk right over the top of them and probably, you know, if, especially if you have a pack on and you wouldn't even notice them, but they're beautiful. CRP, very common uh, all through the lower elevations of the Trinities <clears throat> and in the Russians. As you can tell, I like, going out when it's raining and stormy. Uh, found this one um, uh, below East Weaver, East uh, Boulder Lake in the Trinity Alps uh, three years ago. It was a new one to me, uh, Leafy P. And this was up uh, Swift Creek uh, last year. Uh, and I'd never seen it before. And they were, this was the only group I found that it was in September and they were starting to look pretty ragged. <clears throat> This is above um, uh, East Weaver Lake and the ridge top, uh, Brewer's Jewel Flower, <clears throat> which is uh, really, really pretty growing in clefts of rock right at the top of the ridge. And this is a Pacific Jewel Flower, and it grows specifically in serpentine, and you'll find it on uh, at the upper reaches of the Upper Trinity and over towards Scott Mountain. Um, it's one of those innocuous things that if you're if you're really not paying attention, you walk right past it. <clears throat> Little princess pine. I shot these in Switzerland and in the Blue Ridge Mountains as well. Same uh, Menziaceae. 
toothed wintergreen, shot this coming down Swift Creek uh, two years ago. Uh, my little granddaughter saw this one. She had to stop and get a drink out of one of the springs and she turned around, she saw these. Uh, she's, that was when she was seven. Okay, leafless wintergreen. This is up Canyon Creek. And this is, uh, this is what I found uh, growing trail side um, uh, right after you leave the trailhead. Um, naked stems and pretty much white flowers with a little tinge of pink. And then these are above Trinity Lake, <clears throat> below Cedar Stock Resort. Quite a difference of color. <laughs> Uh, I have a friend in Weaverville who's lived there most of her life, and she confided in me that she, even though she'd lived there all these years, she had never seen madrone flowers. Uh, so I included this for Kathy. <laughs> Longstalk starwort uh, in the meadows uh, up above Canyon Creek. And I love this one. Um, this meadow is uh, Parker Meadow again in uh, up Swift Creek. These are the flowers, and on the right are the little gnome hats. <clears throat> this plant needs a name change, and I think they're working on it. Um, this guy, Hesting, um, Hastings, was a really nasty character. Um, but, uh, yeah, he paid for people to massacre Native Americans. It was really a nasty time. So, but the flowers are beautiful. <clears throat> so I said, I found out uh, uh, from a friend of mine that there was uh, Jepson's daughter blooming uh, up near Slate Mountain. So my son and I took off one day and we actually found all three of these in one day, growing on the ridge. Um, above French, between French Gulch and Slate Mountain, all three of them. And the, the flowers are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they kind of, kind of put a stranglehold on plants, suck the life right out of them, but uh, they're beautiful flower nonetheless. And Douglas Spirea, real common in the meadows everywhere you go. Pacific star flower, another very common uh, flower. I included this because it's a new picture that I took this last spring. Now this is unusual, uh, Shasta snow wreath. I don't know how many of you know about it, um, but it was a recent discovery, well, fairly recent out at Shasta Lake in the limestone above uh, Waters Gulch. And the thing that's interesting about this photograph is that there's actually petals. Uh, one petal attached to two of these wildflowers, and you very rarely see those petals. They usually fall off as the, as the little uh, flor uh, fluorescences open up. So I was very lucky to actually find those with the petals attached. It's a beautiful wildflower, and it grows all uh, in a, one section of the Waters Gulch Trail. <clears throat> Several years ago, I was really happy that I found a Western Blue Flag up above um, on the trail to Wash Basin Lake in the Trinity Alps. And um, it was back in the day when I was shooting film and the, uh, so the resolution wasn't all that great. Uh, I hunted and hunted and hunted and thought I'd never see them again. And here they were all along the trail to East Boulder, uh, right below the waterfall coming down out of the lake. Western Blue Flag, they're fairly tall, about uh, two to three feet. This is another one, a uh, yellow leaf iris. Iris are a really interesting uh, wildflower. This is a yellow leaf iris also. Uh, and I take it on good authority that they are one and the same. Long tubed iris. <clears throat> They're a beautiful wildflower, actually. This was uh, below Gumboot Lake. Uh, on the Trinity Divide, golden-eyed grass. Um, not particularly common, but if you look through the meadows coming down out of Gumboot uh, towards um, the road that takes you up and over the divide, you'll, you'll see these growing along with blue-eyed grass. <clears throat> I've shot these also in Switzerland and in the Blue Ridge Mountains back in uh, 
uh, South Carolina. <clears throat> so I always challenge people to say Pacoon really fast 30 times. <clears throat> That's real common uh, going up uh, Canyon Creek and along the Trinity River. Another all time favorite, Klamath Mountain Catch Fly. Um, these little flowers are so easy to pass by unless you're really looking for them because they blend into the serpentine um, soils and rocks in the background. And the flowers are actually pretty small, uh, but they like, for some reason, logged over areas where the flats are just nothing but stumps and dead branches. You'll find these along the North Fork of the Swift Creek Road. Here's one that uh, Joaquin might know. This was on his property and I didn't have to sneak in to get it. Um, he actually let me know where it was. He even took me on a little tour <laughs> to point him out down near the river, um, Lindsay's Campion. <clears throat> Oregon Violet, uh, pretty common. And Astoria Violet. Now, I shot these above Shasta Lake. There's supposedly a population on Scott Mountain, but I've yet to find it. Uh, I'll keep looking. Anyway, the leaves are very fuzzy and uh, really soft to the touch. Northern Two-Eyed Violet. Uh, these things are tiny. Um, uh, they grow all th any, almost any meadow up in the Trinity Alps, for sure. You'll find these blooming. Big leaf sandwort. This was up uh, Canyon Creek near uh, Emerald Lake, growing near my campsite. <clears throat> California skull cap on the left, uh, nice white flowers, uh, nose skull cap in the middle, uh, and the hybrid on the right. And these are all growing in an area about 15 feet long, right at the edge of the Canyon Creek Trail, all growing together. Past a pin cushion. This is above Trinity Lake, uh, growing on a roadside cut. And uh, this is one I kept going back and back and back and back, expecting to find it in, in bloom. And finally, in I think mid August, early August, I found, I found them actually open and blooming. Roadside cuts, hot and dry. <clears throat> hey, I love Torquilias. This is carrot leafed Torquilia. Um, very common. This is carrot-leaved orchilia. <laughs> um, the one before was um, going. I was up above Callahan when I took that picture on the divide above Callahan, going into the Scott Valley, and uh, this one was going up um, the Stony Ridge Trail. Carrot-leaved orchilia. Uh, uh, upper Right Lake uh, turned out to be a gold mine for me. Uh, just below my camp, I found this growing right down at water's edge, or leaf cordifolia. Um, I, and then this was growing right next to it, heart leaf bittercress. And toad lily, replete with an ant. <laughs> Serpentine Spring Beauty, um, this, you cannot walk through Union Meadows without stepping on these things. There are bazillions of them all over the ground, um, kind of like Nevada Lewisia, uh, literally millions of them growing uh, in that meadow. Candy Flower is going up Canyon Creek, <clears throat> another little Claytonia. Um, Hard to shoot these because any air movement, the, th the stems are so thin that it's you know, hard. These are the meadows above East Boulder Lake Basin. Um, a lot of serpentine and a lot of wildflowers, including uh, this one, California Hesperocherian, uh, which is pretty common. And um, Sitka valerian in the upper reaches. I shot actually shot these uh, on the left. I shot these above uh, East Boulder. And on the right, I shot them above Upper Albert. They don't seem to be particularly associated with any certain kind of substrate. <clears throat> Serpentine on the left, uh, granitics on the right. 
Curry fruit valerian. This is above um, Little Duck Lake in the Russians, growing right at the ridge top. And this is California valerian at, um, along, uh, growing in the sagebrush uh, around um, uh, East Boulder Lake. Couldn't find it anywhere else, only, only in and around the, the sagebrush uh, areas around the lake. Oregon anemone, up the North Fork of uh, uh, Swift Creek. <clears throat> okay, uh, Drummond's anemone. Now, I, all Drummond's anemones have, if you look on the left-hand side, you see that blue cast at the back of the flower. I had never seen them that blue before. This is above East Boulder Lake in the rocks um, below the upper lakes in that basin. Uh, brilliant blue, absolutely vibrant. <clears throat> the tallest toothwort that's going up towards Tangle Blue. Um, another real common uh, wildflower. And columbines. Everybody knows columbines. This was uh, below Gumboot Lake. This is East Boulder, Sierra Wallflower and Spreading Phlox. Couldn't pass up the opportunity to get the two of them together. <clears throat> and this, uh, this is interesting. I shot this in Switzerland also, not these pictures here, but uh, the same um, uh, Amarella uh, in Switzerland. So this is the blue version and this is more pinky version. Um, this was up Parks Creek. in the late fall. This was in late September up Parks Creek. A whole field of plantain leaf buttercup. This is going up uh, to Landers Lake from Union Meadows. And that's what it looks like close up. Just vast fields of it all through the meadows, the upper end of the meadows. <clears throat> and this is water plantain buttercup in the lower parts of uh, Union Meadows around the streams, always associated with water. If I was taking pictures of that uh, Oregon pea, that leafy pea, when I looked over and I saw these little tiny thyme leaf speed wells, um, those things are maybe as big as your little fingernail. Here's the pokeweed knotweed. That's at the outlet of um, Upper Right Lake. Uh, real brushy. It's one I'd never seen before. Um, growing right. Uh, above the outlet. So two years ago, one of the plants I really wanted for the new edition of the book was this one, the monument plant. And um, uh, so uh, I had talked to Michael Kaufman and he had seen them up at Upper Right Lake. Um, so I figured I would go about the same time of the year, I would go in and see if I could find them. Well, I came in from uh, Back Meadows um, on the east side of uh, the marbles, and every plant I saw was just dead on a doornail. And I, so I pretty much wrote them off. I figured, well, I'm going to go, uh, go ahead and pack into the lake anyway. I got over the top of the lake, and here they were, just blooming like crazy. And they're tall. They're beautiful, tall plants. Um, uh, and the flowers are absolutely gorgeous. There's another ant. Now, almost every um, picture I took, I have hundreds that I took on that particular trip, and there were ants um, uh, feeding on the nectaries. Star Swertia. Um, this is more ancien. The, um, the one in the middle of a shot in Switzerland. Um, the right hand and the left hand side, uh, I shot up Parks Creek in late September. They were just starting to bloom in late September until the buds, a lot of them hadn't even opened up yet all the way. <clears throat> it's a, I think, Joaquin, didn't you find some of these up below Mount Eddy? Hmm. Oh, wrong way. Mountain lady slippers. Never tell anybody where you um, uh, 
where you take these kind of pictures because I've gone back to this site for years to shoot these mountain lady slippers. Somebody had dug them up uh, last year and uh, you dig one of these up and they die. They do not survive. I was, uh, and I had told a couple of people about it who were, uh, and I'm not playing blame with anybody, any, but they're really difficult to see this population because they're up and over a tall cut bank. Uh, anyway, that was a good lesson for me. Phantom orchids going up uh, East Fork of Stewart's Fork along the trail um, to the divide. Uh, this was up, uh, the, all this country burned now and these did, did not survive, but this was going up the Boulder Creek Trail. So the whitish one on the left and the, and the really typical purple one on the right. <clears throat> but lots of white ones going up the Boulder Creek Trail and all that burned. I don't think, uh, I'll have to go back up, but I don't think it, that burned so hot in there that I don't think any of these would have survived. <clears throat> these are in the uh, meadows below Upper Right Lake, white flowered bog orchid. This is the trail coming out of Upper Right. Uh, tall larkspur up to about chest height, some of them. The red larkspur and the limestone above Shasta Lake. This is a dwarf larkspur, and I'm, I mean it. These plants were only an inch and a half to two inches tall. The dwarfest of the dwarfs on Scott Mountain. Farewell to spring, uh, pretty common uh, throughout the Trinity area. Uh, beautiful, beautiful little Clarkia. And uh, then the wine cup Clarkia up Canyon Creek. <clears throat> uh, again, another really pretty, I love Clarkias. And then uh, this is mountain Clarkia. And uh, this is one Joaquin tried to get me into a couple of years ago. And I couldn't find the population he told me about, but I found these growing alongside the road to Canyon Creek. <clears throat> Western bladder pod. This is Scott Mountain um, up in the Serpentines. And this is what they look like close up. Really a beautiful flower. And see how they got the name. <clears throat> it's another Scott Mountain, uh, woolly pod milk vetch. Uh, looking down on a little population of them, and this is what they look like close up. <clears throat> Another little beauty. Marsh yellow cross coming out of uh, Union Meadows near Penn Meadows. And this is Tower Rock Cross going up Coffee Creek. Um, very tall plants. <clears throat> This is Klamath Rock Crust, uh, shot this up on Scott Mountain. And this is, nobody can identify this for me, um, uh, but I shot this in Union Meadows. Actually, my granddaughter, uh, she was down getting water out of the creek and she spot, spotted this, told me about it. <clears throat> so no idea on this one. And you have Snow Queen here um, on the coast. This was up uh, Big French Creek, where I shot this one. This is Reniformis, and this is Cordata, Serpentine Snow Queen. Um, and I shot this near um, Grace Falls. I actually fell into this one, literally. I was taking pictures of something else, and I misstepped and, and uh, fell down with my camera and practically rolled over the top of this one. Okay, I love this. So I'm walking up Union Creek and I see these beautiful yellow flowers and I'm thinking, boy, I've never seen that before. So I took all these pictures and then it turns out it's, um, it's a rust fungus that turns these plants into pseudo flowers that attract uh, insects. And you can see the little uh, spore sacs on the, this is what they look like looking down on them. And they were so common up there, this whole, my son in the background, um, this whole meadow, you can just see little yellow spots all through it of these. This, 
Arabic species infected with this stuff. <clears throat> Brown's peony. Okay. Uh, um, I, uh, I heard there was a population uh, near uh, cedar stock, not cedar stock, but uh, um, mountain, not mountain meadows, what's the one? Anyway, up uh, Coffee Creek and uh, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. Coming down out of Union Creek um, last year, I found the one on the right. Uh, they had not opened up yet. So I'm hoping to get back up there and get pictures of the flowers fully opened. Brown's peony. Hey, Ken, some of us are getting saturated. What's that? Some of us are getting saturated. Are we approaching the grand finale? I, I, are, are we getting close to the end? Yes, I am. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I can end at any time. Um, that swamp thistle on the left-hand side is eight feet tall. This is uh, Mount Eddy, dwarf thistle. I'll just go through some of these. Bear Valley buckwheat is uh, real common along roadsides all through the Weaverville, Lewiston, Upper Trinity area. This was a real fine Canyon Creek stone crop. I'd looked for years to find it in bloom and finally stumbled onto it. <clears throat> the flowers never fully open like they do on some stone crops. <clears throat> this is very common all through rocky areas. This was a namesake for uh, one of my editors, uh, Julie Kirstead. <clears throat> this was one of my favorites up at uh, Duck Lake. Um, most photographs of this show is kind of a dingy, nasty brown color. The ones up there are this beautiful, beautiful rosy red. Just a little tiny Sierra mock stone crop uh, growing in the limestone. That's what it looks like up close. Purple mat on the roadsides, uh, grazed levee. This is Castle Lake fed straw above um, uh, East Weaver Lake. And mugwort. This was up Parks Creek, this yellow willow herb, which is, um, uh, I think, rare in, in book. <clears throat> Desert willow herb. Lots of willow herbs. Oops, we're going the wrong way. Sorry about that. Sticky current. This was a new one for me, gummy gooseberry. And uh, red flowering current, which is pretty common. This is mountain pink above Log Lake. Chaparral clematis. And this is a new one, long flowered snowberry. This was at Upper Right Lake. A, a big bushy snowberry. Caparel honeysuckle, uh, I love this one. I've never caught it in full bloom. <laughs> so, yeah, boo berry. <laughs> um, service berry, pretty common. Uh, Klamath plum, pretty common. Choke cherry makes some of the best jam and syrup you'll ever want. And uh, if you want to have a good time with somebody, hand them a handful of bitter cherries. <clears throat> um, dwarf bilberry. Uh, this trail into uh, Canyon Creek, Sawtooth Mountain in the background, and um, um, oh, yeah, anyway, Brown's dogwood. I launched my kayak from this point on Lewiston Lake a million times. I never saw this. Brown's dogwood. Sierra coffee berry, same, almost in the same area. They're both for those brand new to me. And this is up Canyon Creek with uh, blue elderberry. And this is a uh, very unusual Klamath uh, manzanita species that grows up on Scott Mountain, prefers shaded areas, uh, moist, and it's very hairy, sticky. Labrador tea, um, knit bone. Years ago, I had a rock climbing accident and broke my right leg up and my wife made me drink tea out of this stuff. It was horrible. Like I healed up. I don't know if it was out of spite or what. But... Oh, this is Union Meadows at sunset. And this little guy I pay homage to every time I go up uh, East Boulder. I couldn't find a better uh, companion for the trail. And that's it.
Well, we didn't think we had We're all going to go home and start planning our trip to the I'm sorry. I don't hear very well. We're all going to go home and start planning our trip to the summer. And we're going to go home and start planning our trip to the summer. And we're going to go home and start planning our trip to the summer. We got some, thank you, Ken, magnificent collection. Do you get uh, chat? This is from people in Zoom, um, just that they're saying oh. thank you and loved it. And Oh, Don Hollander, I know Don. Ah. Yeah. I don't know him, but I stay in touch with him. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, very good, very good, wow. Okay, okay we're gonna close the meeting now.